because of this type of platform, me being uh, demoing this, instead of you actually doing it yourself, you're not going to be able to personally experience a device that's either being rejected due to uh, criteria that you've set up in CloudPath or uh, a situation where you can see you having to do additional things on that device before it actually is configured and receives its certificate. So what I'm going to do in this lab is more just kind of show you the sections within CloudPath that you can go and configure and the options that you can configure as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at the uh, the NAC and MDM portions of uh, CloudPath. Now this is underneath the device configurations and so it can be specific to the type of devices that you're onboarding or the type of user. In our example we see that we actually have a BYOD device uh, configuration and then we also have a guest users device configuration each one of those are unique to those type of users so we're going to go under configuration here and under device configurations now we see here there are two different device configurations if you recall we created these when we created our first workflow. We created a guest user's device configuration. That one specifically went out and collected or uh, connected to the James guest SSID. Uh, we specified that and also it gets the certificate based on the, the username of guest.ruckustraining.net. So as you can see, this is specific to this guest users. Uh, it's unique to them. And, and do understand that we are going to have probably different criteria uh, when it comes to a guest opposed to, say, a corporate BYOD device. Those we could be more stringent or a little bit more specific because they're going to spend more time on the devices uh, or on the network. And so therefore, we'd be uh, more critical on making sure those things have security features or security management on it that uh, we want to make sure that uh, adheres to our security standards of our organization. So one of the things we can look at is, first of all, here's the summary of that configuration. We can see what SSIDs they're connecting to, which ones are the conflicting, and of course the certificates that are being issued to it. But then on top of that, we can go to the Networks tab and we can see what networks they're connecting to. So here's the secure uh, James Secure Wireless LAN, but we could also add an 802.1x or a wired type connection that would still use the same certificates, still use all of the, the things that we've set up for this, uh, this uh, com device configuration, but it would actually be able to do 802.1x uh, hardwired configuration or verification as well. And the way we do that is we click on the Add button right here. And then we can just simply say add wired 802.1x network to it. So what that does is two things. One is it basically allows us to do it either wired or wireless. Then also it does mean that when a device is connecting to an 802.1x configured or compatible switch or hardwired device, then that device can perform 802.1x, send out verifications just like we saw on the wireless to the RADIUS server, verify this user, and then of course that device can have connectivity or be able to be approved for connectivity through a wired type solution as well. So in this particular case, on these particular devices that are going and being configured with the corporate BYOD configuration, now I've got it set up where they can either connect wirelessly or with wired connections using either 802.1x or WPA2 Enterprise. Now we can move on to the OS settings and then within this you can see we have a lot of the popular OS's that we have in environments today and each one of these can have unique settings that you can configure. Uh, if you want to go in and specify what types of networks and trust tabs you have as well as what uh, operating systems that you're going to allow on your network you can click on this tab and then you can select or deselect what versions of that operating system you want to support. It's totally up to you. Uh, in here you can see we can have different future support versions uh, and then there's other configurations that are advanced down below. Most of these don't need to be adjusted but again it, CloudPath is just fully and completely customizable that you can configure. Now we can further add different settings to these as well. So if we scroll down, for an example, if we go to iOS settings, and let's say we want to have a lock screen or we want to have some additional 
passcodes or have minimum requirements of passcodes and so forth within that device while that device is onboarding and I want to make that perfectly clear uh, this device can go through its onboarding experience and once Express Connect and once it's actually getting its configuration that's when these settings and these requirements are verified all right so if a device does not meet these requirements as it's being configured then that will either be rejected or it will be asked for them to add this additional uh, requirements before the device would actually receive its configuration then ultimately the certificate that it'll use to authentic authenticate to the network. So if we were wanting to go into this, we could set up a minimum length for a passcode, for example. We would select that box, and then we could go into Next, and then at that point we'd set the specific values that we want to verify. Uh, once we push Save there, then we can continue to add other options if we so choose in the iOS settings example as well. We could go in there and have uh, additional alphanumeric lock screen. And of course, we can, uh, we can enable or disable that. So you can see there's a bunch of different configurations that we can add to this. So therefore, as the device is onboarding, these things will be checked and verified. Now, do understand it's not persistent. This is only during the onboarding experience, the onboarding configuration of that device. However, CloudPath does work with persistent NAC and MDM servers and environments. So therefore, those devices can be uh, checked and rechecked on a persistent basis, and CloudPath works well in those environments as well.